Hey, this is Joe with Personas. In the last video, we talked about setting up my custom colors for my mixing template. And today we're gonna dive into track icons. And here's a really simple way to do that so that you are not, again, bogged down by details that don't really matter. Track icons have been a request for many years from our users, and it's finally here in Studio One. The way you show them is by clicking on the wrench up here in the mixer. So the wrench is like the answer to all your problems. Click on that little wrench and then scroll down and you should see an option for channel icons. As soon as you select that, you'll see now this extra space opens up at the bottom of all your channels in Studio One. Now this is my mixing template. And so it all it is, it's folders. And then those folders are connected to buses in my mixer, right? So it's a one-to-one -one relationship. And then I've got my effects here. Before we go any farther, I have to, to change a couple of colors. My effects, I think they have to be either blue, either white or gray or a variation of that because I'm just so used to that being the case. So real quickly, I'm gonna go adjust my color wheel here. Black could be cool. What, what would black look like? That's kind of neat. We'll go black. I just need it to be like a consistent color that looks different from everything else. I've had white for a while. We'll switch to black. Um, and then I don't love the two greens here still. Um, sorry, I just, after living with it, I'd realize I just don't like it. So I'm going to go for a greenier green here. We'll go like dark green and light green. I think that makes more sense. So a nice deep, ooh, deep green there. That's kind of cool. And then we'll make the acoustics, this one here. Actually, I like that one. Yeah, I like that, the way it alternates. It kind of alternates light, dark, light, dark a little bit here. So those colors make me a little happier. So I'm gonna save that, and I'll save that with my template here in just a second. So what's the deal with the track icons? Well, if you click on this area down here, it'll pop up a menu that gives you actually a whole bunch of icons to choose from. Um, and what a lot of people might do, they might say, neat. I'm gonna add in all these tracks. There's a kick drum track and a snare drum, and I'm gonna put all the icons on there so I can quickly, I'd say just don't worry about all that. Uh, for me, a workflow that makes sense, like I like to use features in a way that is causes minimal friction for me in the process, because I don't wanna spend the majority of my time tweaking the software, I'd rather be working on the song itself. So if you'd like to have a little bit of an easier time visually finding things, I think the track icons can be great, but I personally would use them on just the buses and then not on the individual tracks. So right now, I don't have any individual tracks in this session because this is my template, um, but I'm gonna put the track icons just on the buses themselves. I think that is a good kind of, good middle ground to find yourself so you don't spend time searching for icons for everything that you import. So for example, this is my drum bus. I'll make the drum, I'll use the drum set icon. That makes a lot of sense. That was easy. For bass, I'm probably gonna do a picture of a bass guitar. Um, you can come in here and kind of zoom in on specifically like just guitars for a second. So we can find things pretty quickly. Uh, there we go, there's a bass. Uh, for electrics, that should be easy. I'm gonna go with, Ooh, multiple guitars, That's, that works perfectly. And an acoustic will definitely go with that one. Looks a little bit like my J45 guitar. Edit that. And for acoustics, I'll go with that one. Love it. Keyboards, that should be easy. Probably just something like, yeah, that makes sense. Vocal. Uh, yeah, I'm torn. I'm going to go with... Yeah, go with microphone, thinking of a band like the lead singer. And then background vocals will be, we'll do this. Okay, now you could do them on your, your effects if you want. One thing I could do is put all of these into their own um, folder. Um, I don't just because I just have not felt the need to do that um, because they kind of only live here on the mixer. They actually don't show up here in the arranger unless I add some automation for them. But this feels reasonable. So now I can go and say, okay, there are my drums and then everything to the right of that folder is now a drum track. I don't have to have icons on individual tracks. So for example, if I come in here and I just come to the bottom and I create, you know, 30, um, we'll just call it audio. Uh, let's create 30 of them. 
Okay, we have a bunch of tracks here. They're right currently they're living inside the background vocal folder. Um, but if we want to start taking some of these and putting them elsewhere, like let's say these are, let's zoom out a little bit. Like that these are drums. We drag them into there. Let's say we have two bass tracks. This is literally, if you sent me a track to mix, this is literally my process. I'll drag the tracks into the bottom of the session, and then I'll take all the like tracks, for example, the acoustics, the keyboards, the drums, and I'll put them in the appropriate bus. And a couple of things happen when I do that. If you've seen me do this before, the the tracks will take on the color of the bus that I drag them into, right? So all these tracks are now that green color from that electric bus and all the tracks are routed to the bus as well. So if we expand this a little bit to see, we can see all these tracks that we dragged into the drum folder are now routed to the drums bus. So it's kind of a two for deal just for dragging them in there. I get the color and I get the routing. And now when I look at it this way, you could always tell the difference between your buses and your faders by the blue fader versus the white fader. Um, but it's not, it doesn't stand out super clearly. Like from this view, I don't necessarily see the blue faders. They kind of just, they kind of blend into the background. But what I can see is if I'm just looking literally like looking at you, I can still see kind of out of the peripheral vision where these icons sit. And so now, in addition to them being different colors, um, which helps, I can also see exactly where the buses are. So if I'm looking for my drum bus, I can see, oh yeah, it's the one right there with the drum picture of a drum kit on it. This is also helpful for, I know I've got friends who are color deficient or completely colorblind and they don't see all these different shades. Now's a great way to mark where each section of your tracks exists so you can find them pretty easily. Um, and these tracks didn't get a home. I'm so sorry, guys. Let's put you into the background. Whoops, let's put you into the background bus. Hello. Uh, dur -dur 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 into there. Okay, cool. Um, oh, I have to put my, you know what? There's a setting I'm gonna change here. Back to back to the wrench because the wrench solves all of our problems. We come over here and I say keep effects channels to the right. I'm gonna turn that on because I want my effects channels always just right over here, kind of nuzzled next to my main output. So that will prevent what just happened from happening where these tracks happen to sit over here. These effects tracks will now stay on the far right. So now that I've got everything like I want, I can save this as my template. However, I need to get rid of all these audio tracks. So the easiest way to do that is to come over here and I just have to kind of select them all, don't I? Uh, just, just so you know, deleting audio tracks can be really easy. You just select them and you press Shift T and that deletes them. So don't do it on accident. You can undo it if you make a mistake, but that is an easy way instead of having to right click on them and then find where it says remove selected tracks. You can just select them. I'm holding down Shift to select, Shift T to delete. The reason I'm doing this is because I don't want audio tracks in my template. I just want to have my folders and everything there kind of ready for me to go. So now if I turn all this back on, we should be able to see everything. This looks delightful. This is a good starting point for my template. I've got my icons, I've got my colors, I've got my effects. I'm pretty happy with this, this is exciting. So what do I do now? Um, I hit save and I come up here and I go to save as template. I click replace existing because it's gonna replace the existing template and I select mix template and wabam, next time I use this template, this is exactly what'll be here. And I love this process of like always evolving my template. If I open it up one day to mix and I say, mm, I really wish I had this in there, I'll just add it and do that process just now of resaving it and replacing the existing template and we're good to go. Like for example, this was up too high. I don't want these sins to be so big. I move them and I'm just gonna do that process again. It's a real quick process, replace existing, mix template, bam bam, and we're good to go. My template is now as current as it can possibly be. All right, have fun customizing your template. Again, like I said in the last video, just take a few minutes to do this, set it up, and then spend the next year just making a lot of music with this template. And then maybe every year you can freshen it up a little bit with new colors and new settings and all of that. But don't let it be one of those things that you take the next two months to customize the way your session looks. That's too, that, that's too long and you know it. All right, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.